They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. I'm alone today. I don't like that. Nikki had an accident. She is going to be just fine, but she is recuperating right now. She has a broken vertebrae in her neck. She has a broken ankle, but she's doing just fine, and she's going to be back very shortly. I want to thank everybody for their kind words on social media, and thanks for the prayers. We certainly appreciate them. Keep them coming because she is on the road to recovery, and we need to keep her safe and sound. You know, last week we were out there in the smoker, and we were talking about bacon. I did my own bacon. Look at that. You see that? That's a familiar sight right there. Now that, I processed myself. I know what's in it, and it's not going to be around for a long time. We're going to eat this rather quickly. Last time you saw it, there was half again that much there. Now tonight we're in search for the perfect BLT. In fact, we're looking for a KY BLT, and maybe put a C on the end of that for cheese. But first, I was inspired to think about different kinds of things you can do yourself and that's I'm always looking always thinking and I love bologna but I don't like all the ingredients look at some of the ingredients and preservatives and bologna and you think wow no wonder it's dated to stay in the refrigerator for 17 months we're gonna make bologna tonight now it's not gonna look exactly like bologna but it's gonna taste like it we're gonna know where it came from we're gonna know what's in it and it's absolutely delicious and you can slice it as thick as you want now I experimented around got the ingredients that I like. I got the spices that I like. Now most of these are stuff you'll have in your cabinets. Some of them you might have to go out and buy, but you can find all of these. They're readily available. We're going to also use dried milk. One cup of dried milk. We're going to use ice. Now a lot of times if you make sausage, you know you have to use ice in that to, to get that the right temperature and consistency for the meat. We're going to use beef and pork, and this is 80% beef. Now the pork has the fat in it, so we're going to go that route. Now I'm going to need three pounds of beef and about two pounds of pork. Now, if Nikki was here helping me, we'd be mashing up in our hands and using potato mashers and all that. I'm gonna use the old KitchenAid here, and this is just about gonna fill this cat up. And it's really gonna mash everything up and get the flavors involved. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our meat, put it in this container. I've got a bread hook on here, and I experimented around until I get, get something that worked in here. I've measured all my spices and sugars out. Let me tell you exactly what you're going to need amounts. You're going to need two teaspoons of sugar, two and a half tablespoons of salt, one tablespoon of white pepper, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoon of cardamom, one and a half teaspoon of coriander, one teaspoon of sage, three fourths a teaspoon of mace, allspice, and black pepper. Now, don't forget we have dry milk, one cup of that here. 
And as we mix this up, we're gonna put the meat in there first, then we're gonna add a little bit of ice here and there, and then we're gonna add the flavors and just mix that up and mix that up and mix it up. You ready to get started on our homemade bologna? Let me get some ice. Now, I'm gonna go about three pounds of beef and about two pounds of pork, ground pork. All right, here we go. We're gonna get this started. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of ice. I'm gonna work that with a spoon. Go ahead and put my dry milk in there. Spread that around there. We're gonna start getting that consistency. Now we're gonna keep adding little by little as we go along. This milk kinda acts as a binding agent, I think. Keep adding a little bit of ice here and there. A little moisture. Keeps everything firmed up. Now I tried this several different ways. And I actually took some, now I like smoked bologna. So I took one and smoked it, and it was absolutely wonderful. So you can do smoked bologna. You've seen our smoke rolling outside. It's a beautiful thing. Now you can see right now, we're starting to get a little change of consistency there. With the moisture and the dry milk, it's starting to bind together. At this point, I'm gonna come back and start putting my spices in. Mix through it evenly. Run evenly. Never managed to get it in there. Keep on with the spices. It's starting to smell like bologna. Now, in just a little while, you saw very recently we had somebody over and we talked about medicinal plants. Jennifer told us a lot that day, but we have a lot more. So, we're going to have part two of medicinal plants that you can find around just about anywhere. Now, see what I'm saying? It's trying to crawl out of there. God, we're almost there. Now the consistency is kind of what you would probably expect it to be. Binds together very well. All right, we have our meat, which is bound together now very well. We're going to pull this out. All right, we've got that out. I'm going to set this out of the way. I've got my oven preheating on 275. Now I'm going to jam that in here into this pan, I'm gonna shape it. So now, obviously it's not gonna be the perfect round of bologna like you would see in the store, but it will rise and it will round at the top. We're gonna to put that in the oven as soon as we're preheated, 275, and that's gonna take that about three hours to get that temperature around 155, 160 for the internal temperature. So have you a meat thermometer, always. Now the interesting thing about this is the texture, the texture is like salami. So I'm gonna put that in here, shape it up. Now it's gonna look like a meatloaf. But again, the consistency is nothing like that. And remember, we're gonna make sandwiches out of this. So you want the end to where it stands up to where you can slice that. So you can make that kind of square on the end. It's gonna be bologna. As soon as I wipe my hand off, I'm gonna stick that in the oven. Let's watch the clock tick magically ahead. All right, now look what we got. This is a little salami roll I made the other day, but look at the texture of that. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Look how that looks when it's cut. Just like lunch meat. Now I'm gonna cut this bologna. It hasn't chilled. Normally I would chill this. I want you to see what it looks like. Oh, it smells heavenly. Now this is obviously a big thick slice, but that's the way I would put it on a sandwich. Turn this around and let you take a look at this. Is that not wonderful? <laughs> it's bologna. But man, oh man, if you like bologna, you wanna know where everything came from, give this a shot. It's a beautiful thing. A little while ago we showed you our bacon that we fixed. 
A little while later, we're going to show you how to make the perfect BLT. We search for all Kentucky ingredients, but first, let's talk about medicinal plants that you can find just about anywhere on the side of the road in your yard. Here's Jennifer to tell us more. I'm almost full of bloom. Now let's talk about the fact, I bet we got some right under our feet here. Not too long ago, I was walking around in my flip flops, because you don't have to tie them, one arm guy tying stuff. Bumblebee got in between Ouch. my flip flop and got me right on the soft part of the inside. Of, and of course, I'm a wuss when it comes to stings or bites or things like that. And I screeched like a banshee and went over and it stuck in my mind, you said, take plantain which is everywhere oh, yeah. which is everywhere and here's what i did i took a couple of those leaves mm -hmm. and i wadded it up just like you just like you said and i got it to where it was just you know made a mush right i put it up against that and i held it tight for three or four minutes did it work it not only worked when you get stung there's a pulsating deal there oh, even yeah. an hour two Awful. three five yeah sometimes a couple days later I'm not kidding you. When I mashed that up and held it on there, first of all, immediately it was a cool sensation. And it was done. There was oh, no yeah. there was no pulsing, there was no uh, after effects. It was done, it was over. I couldn't have believed it mm -hmm. if it hadn't happened. And I again, broadleaf, look, it's everywhere. Which one is this? Which broadleaf is this? This is this is um, common plantain or broadleaf. And then um, there, This is the one that grows yeah. the little arrow thing up that we right, used to right. shoot as kids. Like, no, this has more uses than just that too. What else? This can also be used on a scrape to slow bleeding and it helps with inflammation. No kidding. Right? And the little seed pods are good for laxative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, yeah, do don't eat that. So you just eat them for a laxative? <laughs> you just eat them, yeah. The bigger the yeah. better? They bigger get a lot the better. Bigger. The more you need, the more no you need. No kidding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So, I remember that. Um, yeah. If I'm, yeah. Well, we'll leave it. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> All right, keep in mind, we are not PhDs. You have just learned in time, you and your husband have to do this sort of thing, and mm -hmm. you know, we all learn from somebody. True. But something that I want to show people that's very easy, can you tell me what that is? That is poison ivy. Three leaves. Three leaves. It's got a kind of a waxy look to it. Mm -hmm. Right next door is this little cat with five leaves. That is Virginia creeper. Uh -huh. Very similar. Look very at, easy to confuse the two. Oh yeah, look at the leaf shape. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. But this usually has, it can be really dark, but a lot of times it'll have little knots on it like that one. Mm -hmm. and it'll be a deep dark green or like I say, it'll have these little bumps on it. But there's Virginia creeper. Once you, once you figure it out, it sticks out in your mind. Now there are some people that can be allergic to this, correct? That's true. There's but, only there's only one way to find out. <laughs> and you can find out instantly? Well, yeah, because Virginia creeper can be very useful. If so, you're not allergic to it. If you're not allergic to it. So let's find out how to test it. You take one leaf with gloves, Okay. rub it on the inside of your arm, wait about 20 minutes, and see if there's any redness, any itching, any irritation. If there's not, you're fine. Because most people are not allergic to it. There's a very small percentage of people that actually have a reaction to Virginia creeper. The good news is if you're not allergic to it, you can take Virginia creeper, use a decoction, which is just taking the plant, putting it down in boiling water and making basically like a tea. And you can use it to wash off the oils of poison ivy. Hmm. So it's, it, it's great for that. It's also good if you have like a sprain, you can soak a, a, a washcloth down in that water and wrap it around a sprain and it helps reduce swelling. Isn't it amazing? We talked about this last time, but obviously it's delicious to eat. It is. This is so good. Um, this is wood sorrel, and wood sorrel is packed with vitamin C, which is fantastic if you get a sunburn. One of the, the best things that will help heal your skin after sunburn is vitamin C. This plant's also great for um, nausea, 
for help to cool you down with a fever. You talking um, about just stomach cramps? Just eating it just like mm -hmm. that. Just eating it just like this, or you can make like a tea with the plant. Huh? Let me ask you this: Could you take that and put that in a freezer bag and save I would that? I think so. You, yeah. You, the only thing you really can't do with this, I have not had success with cooking this, like like in a stir fry. Right. It turns brown and ugly. But yeah, you could dry it or freeze it just fine, and right. then put it into a tea. Definitely. You talked about this off camera and you said moderation is the key here. Oh yeah, more is not better. These are juniper berries. They are extremely fragrant. Like this little berry just, woo, Stop. really, really fragrant, yeah. A lot of people will um, crush these up and put them in bath salts and things, like a really wake you up kind of thing. Maybe mix it with peppermint and things like that. Oh but boy. In a emergency situation, like survival type situation, you could eat maybe one of these berries a day for vitamin C. Um, they, they're packed full of vitamin C, but you wouldn't want to eat, you wouldn't want to gather a bowl of these and mm -hmm. eat them. They're used as a spice. Like you could grind these up and, and use one or two over a whole course of a meal for mm -hmm. a spice. But it, for as far as like a, a, a supplement for vitamin C, maybe one a day. Gotcha. Yeah. Less is better. Less is better. As we're looking around, there's black walnut trees everywhere here. You're talking about in the fall when you get the green husk. Yeah. What do you do with that? You can boil those, take that water, and that water... Which will be acidic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of tannins in that. Yeah. And you want to take that water and you can use it to treat fungal infections like athlete's foot, ringworm, things we don't like to talk about, but parasites. I can see like it's, it's yeah. really got a, I mean, almost not quite toxic, but approaching that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll kill all those yucky things. The yucky stuff. Yucky stuff. All right, here's a nice one to follow up with because we've just been woods walking around in case we get some poison ivy that flares oh, yeah. up. This is the famous jewelweed. It's wonderful stuff. Yeah, jewelweed. This is a really young plant. Here soon, this is going to have these beautiful, bright orange flowers. Mm -hmm. It's also known as touch me not because when you touch the flowers, they kind of pop mm -hmm. apart and fall 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 off the plant. It's got a really succulent, um, juicy stem on it. Mm -hmm. And these leaves, if you're unsure that you found jewelweed. If you take a leaf off and you put it down in water and turn it upside down, the leaf will appear silver, almost metallic in the water. If you're looking for this, you can always usually find it by running water or by a mm -hmm. water source. Where it's damp. Mm -hmm, where it's really damp. This, this, You're not going to find this on mountaintops or in really dry areas. You're going to find this in wet areas. And you can just crush that stem and a liquid oh, yeah. will come out and you can put that right on and it kind right of dries on. and it soothes poison ivy doesn't it? It, it does. It, it acts as a wash for poison ivy. Mm -hmm. I even like to keep this, um, the plant, I dry it and then when I know that we're going to be out hiking, I throw a little bit in some boiling water. I'll take that in a spray bottle and I take it with us and I periodically just rinse off with it, spray it on my arms and legs and it prevents, when you go through poison ivy, it prevents you from getting the rash to start with. Very good. It's a great plant. I want to take this moment to thank you for showing our folks out there oh, how this love stuff being works. Here. Thank it's you. just so cool. We've lost the old ways. I'm trying to get back. Okay, what's the beauty of having your own bacon? You get to decide how thick it is when you slice it. And since this is my bacon and I can do what I want, I'm going to take this and I'm going to slice it rather thickly. All right, all you see me talk about is meat tonight. Well, we do eat more than meat, although I am a carnivore. But you know, our garden, we started kind of late. Now we had to, about a week off because Nikki got hurt, but the rest of the garden is in rough shape. It needs tilled really bad. The tomatoes are out of control. I have never seen such healthy, beautiful looking tomatoes. Now, we don't have tomatoes yet, we don't have lettuce, but we have to go find some that were grown somewhere in Kentucky. Isn't it nice that you can actually find food and know where it's grown? Let's go find some right now. K 
K-Y-B-L-T. I smoke my own bacon. So now everything has to be from Kentucky. Day. My tomatoes aren't quite ready, but I know somebody who knows where some tomatoes are who are ready from Kentucky, and that's Christy. Hi, there's, there's all kinds of K's and Y's and everything, but here's what I see today. Yes, these are Casey County organic oh, tomatoes. That's what I'm talking they about. They are fantastic. Do we have Kentucky bread? We do, and some lettuce. Kentucky lettuce. And maybe some cheese, which is a little twist to add to your BLT. You know what I like on my BLT? I like typically just mayonnaise, but sometimes a little horseradish. That sounds awesome. Can you solve this problem for me? I think I might. So You're all, at, a, at a good place. That's what I'm talking about. So it's all Kentucky. That's right. Oh, we got the tomatoes. Yes. You know, maybe throw one more in all just right. in case, because I got a whole lot of bacon. And we have such a great variety. So, you know, oh, your man. true red, yellows, greens, mm. it's the best time of the Mine year. Mine aren't ready yet, but theirs are. Look at this beautiful stuff right here look how green that is you know there's nothing on it that you wouldn't right. i mean this is organic all these lettuces and kales that we have in are local and they're organic there's no pesticides there are no chemicals on it it is good tasting and it's right here in central kentucky you know our show is an educational show and when we come in here we get ideas and we visit some of these places which is which is great inspiration for the next show maybe we need to look these cats up over at elmwood stock farm in scott county i think so and take a visit i think so great. but now we've got we, i've got the bee at the house i got the bacon at the house we've got the lettuce we got the tomato oh you've already where'd you sneak that out from Good. bluegrass baking company french sandwich here's what i like flour water salt and yeast that's it we I'm, love hooking you up with all these local producers. Well, I love it too. All right, we're exactly. gonna get some cheese. You're talking cheese. cheese. All right, yes. let's go find. Let's go check that out. We've got our B at the house. We got the L and the T. You're putting a C in this. I've been doing it now for like two or three months. It's Just slice it thin. Do you melt it. the cheese? Slice it thin, melt the cheese, and I actually add it on the top and the bottom. Uh -huh. And so we're suggesting Kenny's Farmhouse Cheese from Austin, Kentucky. So we're suggesting a Colby, or this is actually a horseradish oh. cheddar. So now it's turned into a KYBLTC. There you go. I like it. We're going to try it. Thank exactly. you so much for helping Thank us out today. You. <laughs> Now that is bacon right out of the smokehouse. As thick as you want to slice it. That's what I'm talking about. Now that, my friends, is a real live KY BLT. I'm gonna get it all gussied up here, but first I wanna tell you about our Facebook page. Check it out and like it. See where we're going or what we're doing. Speaking of that, we have something coming up. Take a look at this. It's our dinner train. All aboard. Come join us at the Bluebird. There's no train involved. It's just kind of tongue in cheek. Jump on aboard the train. It's going to be a night fit for a king. Elvis inspired recipes by Chef Bill. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com for maybe some recipes you haven't seen before. Check us out there, and we are over 2 million views and growing rapidly all over the world. It's astounding. All right, I'm melting my cheese just a little bit. Christy gave me that idea. Oh, look at that. Then I'm coming back with my thickly sliced bacon. I'm gonna save that thickest piece because I want that for a snack here in a minute. A little mayo, you gotta have some mayo. We got our cheese. So it's a KY BLT C. Does that seem like a lot of mayonnaise? Mm, that's the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. Lettuce. We go slab of tomato two, pop that together, and we have the perfect KYBLT. I made my bacon. We made bologna tonight. Can you believe that? I can honestly say I've eaten enough bologna that I'm full of bologna tonight. Now I'm going to take a bite of this. That's everything that's good from the farm. The tomatoes just screaming summertime. Go look at our bacon making process. It's very easy. Do it in your own home. Remember, Nikki, in your thoughts and prayers. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. We'll see you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.
Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean. Careful craftsmanship, continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. Edward Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Neil. How are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. He's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Hawley's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.